Recording in progress. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, um, Introduction to Designing Web Graphics for the Spring Semester 2022. Um, today, I want to cover some of the basic principles of web design and considerations to make when you are beginning the layout of a page. Um, I know that um, we have started uh, with Wix is your first website and they give you a whole variety of, of layouts and they give you options based on what your profession is, what your business, what your interest is, who your target audience is. So <clears throat> it's those kind of principles that I wanted to go over and how you can begin <clears throat> your own personal layout when you're if you're not relying on an online service that you can, you know, if you want, you can sketch <clears throat> on a napkin. Um, but what I'm showing you in front of here, in front of me, um, <clears throat> is a layout um, from chapter four that was given as a Photoshop file. And it's broken down into the basic components of, of, of every web page. I've mentioned this several times before, but <clears throat> it bears repeating that you do need to have, excuse me, <clears throat> these elements, um, it, it's um, kind of a standard now, uh, practice, best practice in web design to have all of these elements. So let's go over them one by one. And then I wanna go over some best practices that you need to consider when even when you're using the online service, um, uh, live editing services, something like Wix. Um, for example, your color choices, your type choices, um, when you have multiple pages, things that you need to take into consideration. <clears throat> when you're um, building your website and making design considerations. So this is what you're looking in, in front of us, or in front of you is um, um, the basic web design that we're working on in the textbook, okay, for Green Start. Um, which is a fictitious um, green awareness and action kind of, um, uh, well, you know, company. Um, so some of the considerations are, you know, a color layout, how many columns you need and that sort of thing. Um, but the way that they've built it is a, it's a very finished, finalized comp, comp or comprehensive and they've broken it down into the basic elements of that you should have in almost every um, web page. The first is you need navigation to be able to go from one page to another. Where is that co located? <clears throat> um, it's customarily located along the top, top these days. Um, there is a bootstrap tutorial and showing you how to create one for the left or for the right. That used to be really very popular to switch from the top navigation bar to a left or to right. Um, but I don't know. It, it's a design choice that you need to make. And if it um, benefits you to have it on the left or right, then go for it. But the point is, it needs to be separate from everything else so that it's designated as an element for navigation. It needs to be legible and easily readable, and it needs to be consistent from page to page. I'll talk about more of these things in a little bit. <clears throat> but as you can see, if we turn off all the layers, or if I turn off this layer, um, that, one, that nav bar goes away. Okay. Um, the next basic element of a web page is the header. The header typically um, has the title of your company, or um, it has a logo, and it's sort of like a, um, a masthead that you would see on a magazine or newspaper, that um, it's part of your identity that, that you use um, in, you know, to visually create a, <coughs> excuse me. It's used to create um, um, a basic visual creative um, mark for yourself 
or whatever company that you're 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 working with. And you can see that that was built <clears throat> on a separate layer. The next is your main content. Okay, the content of, of, of your pages. You can, if you wish, use side asides. You don't necessarily have to. Typically, um, most web pages uh, are in a one, two, or three column format. And that's what we're working with <clears throat> um, in the lessons um, to get your basic structure. Now, you can see that it's broken down into a left aside. It's broken down into a right aside or sidebar two, and the main content going in the middle. <clears throat> if you want, you can have um, a left aside and main content, but then what you would have to do is you'd have to structure it in such a way so that um, you would have to resize the columns so they fit the entire width of the page. Um, the main content, you can also have one with strictly a right aside. And again, you would structure it in a way so that you know the, the columns would fit the full um, width of the page. So um, the last element that we have here is the main content. And again, for some websites, that might be a one, you know, desirable to have a one column format. And again, we would have to restructure it using CSS or Bootstrap and Bootstrap to make sure that it um, stretched the entire width of the page. But you have those options available to you. And if you want, you could create, you know, one, two, three, as many different comps as you want to get an overview of what it's going to look like. This is something that you would probably want to um, give to uh, or, or just show to a client to let them know what they're going to get. And then the last element <clears throat> on the page is the footer. Um, all websites have footers. And I will talk about those in just a minute, what they, you need to have in a footer, what you need to have in your um, header, what you need to have in your head bar. Um, um, and your navigation bar, rather. Um, and to make sure, it's really important these days that your website is ADA compliant, meaning that it, it, it uh, follows the um, American and Disabilities Act laws, which are really, really, um, um, they are the law to make sure that your website is accessible to people with disabilities. Um, namely, people, you know, if you have sound, then what's involved with that if someone is deaf viewing your website, if you are principally um, a, a group, you know, you're, let's say you're doing a website for your rock group, um, and you want to have, and you have music on your, your website, well, how would a, a deaf person access your website and gain access? Maybe instead of the music itself, or in addition to the music, you would have lyrics available for them on a separate page, or maybe it would be integrated into your entire website. Um, most of the concerns seem to be with those who are sight impaired. What does the website look like <clears throat> when um, images are turned off because they don't see images? And that is for the very reason that you begin, we get, begin to use, I talked about headings, um, H1 through H6 and paragraph tags, those have um, a, a significance and uh, especially for ADA, um, being ADA compliant. Um, they um, are, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? That, that they provide the proper syntax that you use um, in web design, okay? And the same with the structure of your web page. Make sure that it, it's easily readable for those who are, have disabilities. Now, what I wanted to show you today, in addition to this, <clears throat> is some basic best practices. Now, this was done in 2007, but all of it pertains to today. So the first thing that you have to decide when you're working with a page layout and you're in that initial stages of deciding what you want to do um, for your website is you have to first decide who is your target audience. 
Okay. So if it's a corporate, are you going to go with more corporate colors? Are you going to go with a very strict, rigid kind of um, layout format? If it's, you know, maybe for um, children that maybe you're going to use and, and it's meant to be playful, um, maybe you would want to go with bright colors. Maybe you would want to go with, again, instead of a really rigid structure for your layout, maybe you want to go with something a little bit more loose and, and again, something that would be appealing to them, a little bit more playful. The next thing that you need to consider is make sure that your site is consistent, that the header and the logo are always in the same place <clears throat> in the same um, on, on each page. Okay. The same with the navigation, that whatever you decide, that it's either if it's going to go to the top or the left or to the right, that it's consistent from page to page to page. Um, you don't want people having to think about navigating through your website. The splash page will give them the first indication of a first indication of what your website is about. And that should be done through images and colors and basic text, but it should grab them much the same way that maybe a billboard grabs the viewer, you know, in a very quick fashion. <clears throat> and then once they've become acclimated to it and they have interest and they go to the following pages, that there is consistency, consistency in the, where the header is and where your navigation is and the appearance of the both. Um, the next, is that make sure that the page titles are informative. Um, and the titles are what I mean that what you have, what will come up in the, um, uh, the tabs of the browser that it's rendered in. Um, that becomes really important these days for um, search engines to help find your website. It's not the only thing, but it is one of the most important things. So if you simply name your pages um, home or about or something like that, um, there are a gazillion websites with home pages, with about pages. So maybe the title should start with the name of your company, the name of your website, and then say, like I've done with my own, it's Kirk Miller Art and then hyphen um, home, Kirk Miller Art hyphen about so that it's the Kirk Miller art that attracts the, um, grabs the attention of the, um, the search engines. Um, the next key element that you'll need. Um, so make sure that, you know, will be a page footer. And we talked about that where it's about the bottom of the page and that should have your copyright. So if you want a copyright or if you wanted to use Creative Commons copyright, you can do that. If the content is um, date sensitive, when was it last updated? And a contact email address someplace. Doesn't always have to have all those all that information, but this is pretty common. Okay, the contact email address would be if you if if there is a um, a webmaster that is in charge of it, who is separate probably from the business itself. <clears throat> um, the next rule of thumb involves scrolling. Um, you want to try to avoid scrolling from left to right in, in, at all costs and try to minimize the vertical scrolling. So they're figuring, and this is years ago, but even for a small monitor, this could be for, a, um, uh, these days would be for, could be for a, a, a tablet that maybe um, a cat tablet vertically that you wouldn't have to scroll to see, you know, the ent an entire page. Okay, so those are some of the basic layout rules. Here's a bit more. Um, make sure that you balance the text and graphics with negative space or white space, whatever that space is that surrounds them. Um, it's a little bit different than than print, and in fact, it's a, it can be a lot different than print when your um, the viewer is viewing a page that they need that air around the text, and they need the air around the image to be able to visually 
navigate through your page. Um, the next thing, and this is really important for um, uh, number eight here, is important for ADA compliancy or to be ADA compliant is make sure that there's good contrast between the text and the background. So it really bothers me when I see a dark background and I see red text or deep blue text. There isn't enough um, contrast between the background and the text um, to make it easily visible. Very important. <clears throat> you also wanna make sure that the repetitive information, that header and logo, your nav bar, those things, take up no more than maybe a quarter to a third of the browser window at 800 by 600 resolution. Now that's low resolution. I don't think anybody works at that anymore, but that was based at the, you know, that's the kind of a low bar. Um, make sure that your homepage, and I call it a homepage, some people call it um, a splash page, is really, um, compelling and um, gives interesting information. I prefer um, using just a single image. Um, it could be maybe a slideshow with the title of the website, and that's it. Something that, you know, since we are in graphic design here, this is a, in a graphic design class, we want something that's visually compelling and something that grab their attention. And then if they, look, you know, if they seem interested, then they will go to the other pages um, on your website. If your initial web page, you know, your home page or your splash page is too busy, um, it may, you know, turn uh, potential viewers off and they might go someplace else. Now, if you're going to something like amazon.com, you know, it's a commercial website, they're going for a different reason. So, <clears throat> It's, they tend to be very busy. They tend to be really, um, you know, they are compelling, but at the same time, um, you already know that you're gonna go shopping and they're gonna have a search window at the top and you're gonna just probably do a search initially rather than just kind of gradually, you know, um, uh, maneuver your way through the their website and just kind of like do some sort of window shopping. Most people go there for specific things. The next important element is that your homepage should download within tech, um, 10 seconds on a phone connection. Okay, that's a slow that has changed over the years. Um, and the thing that's nice about Dreamweaver is that it does give you um, in seconds based on, or, you know, well, when we were designing the, the images in, in Photoshop, I should say, that it tells you with a slow internet connection, how many seconds it's going to take to load that image. The same is true for Dreamweaver. It will give you some insight as to um, <clears throat> the size of the page and the, the seconds it will take to download. So again, that's for the splash page. It can take a little bit longer for the any successive um, pages. Uh, make sure that your browser is um, compatible. Now, over the years, you know, at one time, Internet Explorer was the um, browser. And before Internet Explorer, it was Netscape. Netscape doesn't even exist anymore. Um, Explorer has really followed, uh, fallen behind the curve. Firefox. Safari and um, Google or um, Chrome are the principal, the three principal um, browsers that people will use so these days. So not make sure that your browser is compatible for current versions in each of those, but um, earlier um, iterations of those browsers. Um, a lot of people don't keep up. I know that I'm kind of um, neurotic about updating browsers on my computer, but a lot of people just leave it alone and it, it can wreak havoc on um, a viewer if your website isn't compatible. It's maybe compatible for Firefox, but um, maybe not for an earlier version. And um, your, if your page doesn't read properly, again, it will turn people off and go away from your website. 
<clears throat> so by um, principles regarding navigation, um, remember I said that you should separate the navigation from the rest of your page. And by putting it at the top and making sure, sure that there's adequate contrast, that does that. So make sure that the links are clearly and consistently labeled. Um, make sure that it's easy to use for your target audience. Um, Flash is no longer used anymore, so don't worry about that. Um, um, it is still possible to use a site map if you need breadcrumbs to help people navigate through your website. For our websites, they're relatively small. Um, and so <clears throat> that's generally site maps are not necessary anymore. The other thing is, is that for all navigation, hyperlinks need to work. If they don't work um, and you get uh, an error message, it, maybe your link goes to, um, you know, it gets that 404, I think it's 404, 404 error message that it goes to a page that it's supposed to be there and isn't. Um, not good. So con consistently, check your links to make sure that they all work. And we'll discover working in Dreamweaver that one of the things <laughs> um, is easy to goof up on is that if we're going to, for each lesson, you should have a separate um, root folder. Now, normally for your own personal website, you have a single root folder and that's it. But for each lesson, we will it, it has its own individual root folder. And if you don't switch in uh, properties in, in Dreamweaver, what it will do is it will link um, images, it will link um, text and that sort of thing to an earlier version. And when you upload it, um, it's going to be looking to a different folder. So you're going to get a broken link there. So we'll talk about that later in the semester. But make sure that all of your nav, you know, your hyperlinks work. Next is um, color and graphics. So using different colors uh, on a page, um, your backgrounds, your text, um, maybe, and two other colors should be a limited uh, to three or four colors and that's it. Um, use very basic um, color scheme, unless it warrants more, unless there's a reason why you need more colors. Um, as I said, maybe the, the, the theme of your, your website is something that's about color. Maybe it's about being kind of festive, about being kind of, you know, um, fun, or lighthearted. Um, then maybe more colors would be necessary. But, you know, use them um, consistently. Use them. Um, make sure that there's good contrast, as I said before, associated with the colors that you use for your text. And colors alone, if you're just using colors by themselves, they should convey meaning. And that taps into accessibility again. So, and again, when I say accessible, that for colors, if it happens to be an image of color or one that's predominantly colored, then we'll add what is called, um, uh, 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 what is it? It's, um, we're gonna use, oh, I can't think. I can't think. Why can't I think? Um, we're going to be using um, an alt tag. Thank you. Alt tags are um, used in the event that the a viewer is maybe sight impaired and your image uh, won't be visible to them, but they need to know that, that, it, that an image was there and what is um, the content of that image. So Again, if, especially if color is used in and of itself to convey meaning, then you'll need something, that, an accessibility um, alt tag for that. Um, the use of color in graphics should enhance rather than detect. That seems pretty obvious, but it should rather enhance rather than distract from the site, okay? It shouldn't take you away from the main content of your image. And again, continuing with color and graphics, um, make sure that your graphics in general are optimized. That's what we did with the first assignment. And make sure that they don't slow down the download of your page significantly. 
once it's downloaded um, on a computer, it will be in cache. So um, if you want to see changes that you've made in a web, web page that you've designed, you need to refresh the page. Um, but once it's in cache, then it loads, and you'll notice that every page loads instantly. Um, each graphic that you use should serve a clear purpose. There shouldn't be any <clears throat> graphics that um, are there for no reason. Um, make sure that you use, I just mentioned this, for uh, image tags. Um, um, we're going to go ahead and use alt tags to make sure that the images that are displayed um, are there for people with disabilities who are sight impaired. <clears throat> okay, and we will get into that more with um, as we build and construct our website. So these are just some of the basic things that you need to know. Um, animated images, make sure that they don't distract, um, especially if they repeat. Um, so if an image fluctuates quickly, and animated GIFs used to be really popular, and they can be really annoying. They're like little bugs that just like mosquitoes or something that just are on a page that um, become a nuisance after a while. And that can be true with sound as well. <clears throat> um, we'll get to that in a moment. But um, if the graphics do repeat, and on slideshows, they will. Um, maybe if they go to us, uh, go slowly, that it won't distract in its repetition. You know, it repeats over and over. Okay. Um, when you're adding multimedia, and again, <clears throat> flash is no longer an issue, but if you're adding audio or video, again, make sure that it serves a clear purpose. Um, again, flash no longer uses, but. Um, Make sure that they are used as content for the website and that they're not simply there for a distraction. Um, it's important, and that's why I don't add audio and video, that you should include download times. Um, again, for people with different uh, internet speeds. Um, we don't need downloads for media plugins anymore. It used to be the case that when you incorporated a flash file um, into your website, um, it required a plugin in order to, to view it. And so the goal was if there are any, if there is anything on your website that needs a plugin, that you provide a link to that website so that the end user can download the plugin and um, easily access your website. Um, your content and presentation. Um, I stick with common fonts. Um, I, it, it, over the years, though, web design has expanded um, considerably, and there's a greater um, variety of fonts available. Um, it's also, but, you know, I like sticking with um, some of the basic typefaces. Um, just because they're easy to read, they're, um, and that's probably the most important thing. For myself, um, when it comes to um, uh, fonts for um, text, I stay away from Times Roman or any serif um, typefaces, just because serifs, when they get small, become difficult to read. So for most of the text on my website, I stick with um, sans serif typefaces like Arial or Helvetica or something like that. Um, anyway, um, the, some of the techniques that are used for writing for the web is to keep everything kind of short and to the point. That's why we're going to use um, uh, um, un, unordered, uh, what are they? Um, unordered. Uh, I can't think. I'm babbling here and I can't think. Um, unordered lists. Um, and unordered lists um, are presented, you know, short sentences and bullet points. Uh, make sure that your paragraphs are short to the point and use a lot of white space, um, negative space between paragraphs. Um, 
make sure that um, there's a consistent, again, I'm bringing up consistency again, make sure that there, the consistent use of fonts exists, can use a consistent use of font sizes that will be done in the headings and font colors, okay? And again, unless they have a function, then you know, keep it to a minimum. Again, make sure that content that's provided is meaningful and uni, um, useful. And content is organized in a consistent um, manner so that it's easily accessible. Again, presentation continued. Um, you need to have um, minimal clicks to access your website. The rule of thumb is, and I believe that that is true today, um, is that you should be able to go get anywhere on a website in, in no more than three clicks of the mouse. Okay, so that's something to consider. If you have something buried deep down in your website um, that you shouldn't need more than three clicks to get there. So that will affect your navigation. That will affect where the, the content is located on your website and that sort of thing. Um, so timelinessness, um, <clears throat> we've talked about that briefly. Um, again, may, if, if content is an issue, and I know that you've gone to websites for other classes um, to get information for your, uh, you know, to do research for a paper of some sort, um, like a history, you know, research paper or English paper. Um, you want to make sure that the information that you get is recent and accurate. Um, so make sure that your copyright date is current and accurate. And if there's any revisions to your <clears throat> your content that is critical, make sure that that is um, noted in the in the footer. Uh, make sure that content you include is not outdated. That seems kind of obvious. Content is free of typographical and grammatical errors. That's one of the things, though, that I like about web design. Um, in my This Week in class or other things that I post on my website, I will notice from time to time that um, maybe I've made a, an, an, an error in grammar or spacing or something like that. I can always go back and update it and change it. Um, the other thing is, is that um, you can provide links to other useful websites. Just make sure that those links are um, noted and easily visible. Um, and the lessons that we will be doing, there are some that we will be working on that. In fact, that will be lesson 11. Um, presentation can um, continued. You should avoid things kind of like click here. Um, the links that you use should be obvious to the user. And again, consistent in color and presentation. Um, if standard link colors aren't used, um, make sure that the set of link colors that you're used are, are consistent. Um, um, especially if you have a lot of links for visited and non-visited status, and we will get into that, what, you know, the options that you have that for that. Or another way of adding visibility to links is to place, use a hover state so that when your mouse goes over it, and hovers over it that it indicates that a link is there. Um, if this again goes towards accessibility again, and I already talked about this, make sure that if you use graphics or any media for that matter to convey meaning, make sure that alt tags are available for um, people with disability. Okay. Um, <clears throat> national standards are found with WOW. I don't know if they exist anymore, but you will want to go to, and I'm going to go to my website here. Let's go back. So um, some of the things that I've done on my website, and I've tried to make it um, helpful for you, is that if you go to the W3C, this will give you, um, link or a link to all of the current web standards and they're constantly changing. Another thing that I've made available to, to uh, recently on my website is a little button 
so that um, it adds an accessibility menu. So if I want to increase contrast, I can do that, or I can change the contrast. Okay. I can go, let's go back again. I can change again, and we can go to highlight all the hyperlinks on the page if it's difficult for me to see. I can also make sure that I go to bigger text, make sure that that's um, available for people. Okay. Um, another one might be, do I need a large cursor? Maybe I don't, but maybe the viewer does, and they have access to all of those. Okay, so I'll go ahead and let's close or not good. Let's go ahead and close this. Come on, come on, come on. Line height, text align. There we go. So I don't want that. That's another way of reading mask. Okay, it was having a bit of, but that's kind of a nice feature. Okay, um, just to let you know, I use for most of my website, I use a two column format. Okay. Um, but for my splash page, I use a single column format. Um, I've also added a little bit of animation to it so that it fades in. That's something that you can do. It's a nice, it adds, it's so that for the viewer, it's not so, um, you know, blunt and um, kind of uh, just, you know, it, it eases them into your website. And my website is slow at the moment. So we'll leave that alone then. Okay. So maybe I can use another browser. Let's try that. I'm going to go back here. Everybody that was here today, and we'll go to Kurt Miller's website. And this is loading a little bit quicker. So you can see that all browsers are not the same. And I all of these pages may have been in cache too. So I try to make sure, you know, with my splash page, that the image is compelling, it's unique, that's for sure. And then all of my links at the top and my navigation are clearly linked or uh, visible here. Um, some of them, when you hover over them, you'll see that there are drop down menus for additional pages, some not. For Kirk's classes, drop down menus. For my blog, not blog, not for my contact page, not. Um, when we go down to the very bottom of my page, okay, you can see that this is the footer. I have additional information, and there is an alt tag for that. Um, and I've used a little scrolly here for visual interest. And each of these um, go to a separate page. So if I wanted to go to um, a page, it will take me to my gallery here. So there are links on all, practically all of my images. Okay. So I try to make my websites um, compatible with um, the rules or the best practices. I know that it's important that um, I've try to make everything as accessible as possible for people with disabilities. Um, and that's pretty much um, all that I have to say for today. Um, do you have any questions before we end today? No? Let me um, pause. So um, this lecture today was to give you come, some insight as to the, the basic principles behind laying out web pages and best practices for designing web pages. Um, that's covered in lesson four. And um, 
this week or next? Um, no, you just, with lesson four, just read it. You don't have to upload it at all, no. Um, it won't be until you complete lesson seven that you will upload it and publish it. Lesson five is when we really begin to start building the website, the basic structure. And then lesson six and seven are really, we get a full um, working page at that point with the exception of adding links to other pages, but you'll have a full nav bar. You'll have the header will have um, three columns and they will be um, constructed by using bootstrap components so that um, when it's resized for a tablet or a smartphone that um, it will read clearly um, and it will scale down sit the, um, uh, accurately um, and make it easy on the viewer. That's another thing that at the time that that other best practices was um, written that um, responsive websites were really not the thing at the time because um, in 2007, there really weren't any smartphone. Um, but now everybody accesses the web using a smartphone and a tablet. And it, in the past, you would have to create a website, a separate website for each. Um, that's too much. So now we're creating websites that are compatible with all devices. I think that's the best practice, the best way to go. So just read it over. And um, on Thursday, I'll kind of give you a tour of lesson five. Okay, oh, and at the same time, if you guys would like to share um, your progress on your Wix website, I would appreciate it. I'd like to see what you're doing and give you some pointers. Okay. That's it for today then. So um, I'll say goodbye. I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, if there aren't any questions, um, you guys are free to leave.